Hi, everyone. Hope everybody is doing well and safe. Okay, this uh, video, I want to go over the difference of uh, testing, the difference of two population proportions. We learned how to test one mean, one proportion. So in the next series of videos, uh, we're going to go over testing the difference of two for a population proportion, the next is going to be two population means. First of all, uh, let's go over the requirements. These requirements usually are going to satisfy in the problems that you see, or you might just have a problem to check the requirements. So the sample are from two simple random samples or SRS. The samples are independent. We went over dependent and independent samples. So one sample doesn't have to do anything with the other sample. For each sample, n times p hat should be greater than or equal to uh, five and n times, here it should be, q hat should be greater than or equal to five. Now let's go over the steps. The good news is there's a, this is very similar of the steps that we saw when we tested one mean or one proportion. So the first step is writing the claim. So now what you can have in this case, P1 equals to P2, that's HO and P1 is not equal to P2. If it's not equal, then we know same way we're dealing with two tail test or you can have p1 equals to p2 and h1 p1 is greater than p2 so if it's greater than then we're dealing with the right tail test or h o p1 equals to p2 and h1 p1 is less than p2 in this case we're dealing with left tail test sometimes instead of p1 equals to p2 you might see P1 minus P2 equals to zero. They're the same thing. I just want you to be careful with that. Once you read the problem and write the claim, next is to find the critical value or the, crit the critical values. When you deal with one or two proportions, it's always a Z test. So the critical values, you have to use the standard normal distribution. These are Z values. Use your calculator. We learned that do second function distribution and then go to the third one, inverse norm. You put the area to the left, zero, one, and you can get your critical value. I'll show that to you once I go over an example. Once you're done with the critical values, then is test statistics. Test statistics, it's a Z test. <clears throat> we know that and it's a formula. The formula is a little bit different again when the formula comes from we'll talk about that but here just know how to use it that's p hat one minus p hat two minus p one minus p two over square root of p bar this is p bar remember times q bar which is <coughs> one minus p bar over n one plus p bar q bar over n two always p1 minus p2 this quantity is always zero it's assumed in ho so when we write the firm formula we assume it's always zero now what is we know that p hat one is x1 over n1 and p hat two is x2 over n2 one thing also let me add here once if p hat one and p hat two are given right away, calculate x one, not x bar one, but x one, which is p hat one times n one and x two, which is p hat two times n two, because when you use your calculators, you are gonna be needing x1 and x2. Some problems they give it to you, some problems they go directly to p hat 1 and p hat 2. So make sure to calculate those right away. 
once you find the test statistics, then it's the first conclusion. And the conclusion we know if the test statistics falls in the shaded area or p value is less than alpha, then you say reject HO. I kind of showed a little example here. If the test statistics is in the shaded area and is after the critical value, which is right here, <clears throat> then you reject HO. Or when the p value is less than alpha, this is alpha and this is p-value. Since the test statistics is inside and p-value is less than alpha, two ways you can make the con conclusion. One is the traditional method, which you use the test statistics, and the other one is the p-value method. If the test statistics falls in the non-shaded region, or p-value is greater than alpha, then you fail to reject HO, just like here. This is the test statistics is in non-shaded region. And again, this whole area is the one in peak is the p-value. And this area here, that's alpha. Or p-value greater than alpha, then you fail to reject HO. Then you make the final conclusion by looking at the original claim and the counterclaim. Either you say enough evidence to support the original claim or not enough evidence to support the original claim. If you want to use your calculator, you can go to stat, pick test or highlight test and go to number six is two prop Z test. The calculator is going to ask you for X1 X2 and N1, N2, and the type of test, which is in H1, and the calculator, you're going to give you the test statistics and uh, the p-value right away. So it's uh, much better to use the calculator. Know the formula, but the calculator is much faster. Now let's do a couple of examples here. So you can see how this works. Use the traditional method. The traditional method is the test statistics method to test the given hypothesis. Assume that the samples are independent and they have been randomly selected. So the requirements are already satisfied here. Use the given sample data to test that P1 is greater than P2. Use significance level of 0 0.01. The sample one information is given here and sample two here. So we have X1, N1 and X2, N2. First, we write the claim. This was given in the problem. We know it's greater than no equal sign, so it's H1. Automatically, HO will be P1 equals to P2. This is in the problem, so let's call that the original claim and of course, the other one, HO heal, is going to be the counterclaim. If you want to find the critical value, and again, alpha is given to be 0.01 right here, and it's a right tail test. So if you want to find the critical value, you can go to inverse norm 0 0.0101 with your calculator, and you get negative 2.33. Be very careful. This is a right tail test. So you write two point positive 2.33. And I wrote the note for you. Take the positive 2.33 because it's a right tail test. Test statistics, we went over this formula. So you have to substitute, but here you have to find p hat one and p hat two. p hat one is 38 over 85 and p hat two is 23 over 90. So and we need p bar don't forget p bar is x1 plus x2 over n1 plus n2 you substitute the numbers use your calculator find that and right after that find q bar which is one minus p bar and if you do that you get 0.651 substitute all these numbers with their uh, these values with their uh, not uh, the, in the formula, and if you do that, you get 2.65.
Now, using the calculator, and I do want to share this with you. So let me stop sharing this and let me go to the calculator. Show you how that works. And it's getting there. Yes, it's ready. So so let's quit this. Let's clear everything. One more time. You go to stat, test. And I passed it. So you go up. It's two prop Z test. Enter, <clears throat> x1 is given in the problem. So let me put these values, x1 was 38. N1 was 85. X2 was 23. And N2 is 90. So I go down and the claim was P1 is greater than P2. So it's the third one here. So we enter that one and we can just go ahead and calculate. There we go. This is the claim H1, Z is 2.657, which is very close to 2.65. And this is the p-value, 0 0.00394 and uh, so on. And the rest, we had p-hat 1 and p-hat 2. So let's go ahead and do the conclusion. So the calculator gives, a, give, gives us the test statistics and the p-value. And again, it's always a good idea to use the calculator because you're sure you're going to get the right answer. Now we got two point, let's go over this. We got <clears throat> test statistics is 2.657. And this is in the shaded area because this is the shaded area with after the critical value. So the first thing when you see this in the shaded area, you say reject HO, reject HO, then you come next to your HO and you write reject. If I'm rejecting HO, that means I'm accepting H1. So once you write this, then the second step, just go to OC or the original claim. Next to OC, you see it says accept. If I'm accepting the original claim, that means I have enough evidence to support the original claim. And I wrote the conclusion, the final conclusion right here. So you see why that's happening. One more time, we are accepting the original claim. So we have enough evidence to support it. So that's the first example. There's another one here and let's go over this and I'll walk you through the solution. In a random sample of 360 women, 65% favored the stricter gun control laws. In a random sample of 220 men, 60% favored the stricter gun control laws. Test the claim that the proportion of women favoring stricter gun control is higher than the proportion of men favoring stricter gun control use significance level of 0 0.05. So here is 0 0.05. One more note, if the significance level is not given in a problem, it's always 0 0.05. If the problem does not give the significance level, please take 0 0.05. That's the most common one. Now here, N1 is 360. These are the women. P hat one is given here, 65%. And 
what I did, I right away calculated X1, N1 times P hat 1. And if you multiply, you get 234. And X2 is N2 times P hat 2. And that's going to give you 220. And I didn't add that, which is pretty, oh, here we have it. So N2 and P hat 2. One more time, if P hat 1 and P hat 2 are given, right away calculate X1 and X2. The claim, it says the proportion of women, which is P1, is greater than proportion of women, which is P2. So we write that first. We know that's H1 because there's no equal sign here. So HO is going to be P1 equals to P2. This is the claim in the problem. So it's the original claim. And of course, HO in this case is going to be the counterclaim. The critical value, it's a Z test again. So go to your calculators, inverse norm 0.0501. And if you do that, this is one of the common ones, it's negative 1.645, but you take the positive one again because it's a right tail test. So in this problem, I did use the calculator directly to find it. And let me go ahead and do that one more time. So you see how that works. So again, go to stat, test, go down to two prop Z test, enter that. In this case, we have the givens X1 we calculated that was 234. N1 was 360. X2 was two. We calculate, calculate 132. And N2 was 220. And again, it's the third test because it says P1 is greater than P2. So enter that and calculate. Test statistics 1.21 and P-value is 0.11297 uh, and keep scoring. So let's go back and make the conclusion. So the conclusion is right here. I drew the line for the test statistics, 1.21. It's in the non-shaded zero source region. So I said, fail to reject HO. Fail to reject, that means accept HO. If I'm accepting this, that means I'm rejecting H1. Then you go to your original claim. OC, next to OC, it says reject. That means reject the original claim. If you're rejecting a claim, that means we don't have enough evidence to support it. So final conclusion, you write not enough evidence to support the original claim. And I put all the <clears throat> steps for you. Here you can take a look at it. The p-value was 0.113. You got that from the calculator. And that's much greater than alpha, which is 0.05. And I put it here. If p-value is greater than alpha, then you do say fail to reject HO. What is p-value in this case? P-value is all this area, the red area, which is much greater than this blue area I'm shaving now. Please which watch this video two, three, four times. And then uh, once you finish this, you should be able to do the problems about testing the difference of two population proportion. Thank you and I uh, hope you all have a good one. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.